Hey, there we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is July 24th, 2019, and we're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going there, chat room? Good afternoon, Kasukin. Matt LeBeau. Is it Matt LeBeau? Matt Lebo? Good morning. Uh, actually, good afternoon. Doing a little bit of work in South Africa. Matt, let me know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Welcome. It's always good. Good to welcome some new folks here. Uh, King440, hi. Welsh Ronaldo is here. Good morning. Coding Gorilla, Musical Bookworm. Hello, hello. Stelzy. Very good to see everybody. My gosh. Um, something happened here where... I don't know if I got something stuck in my mixer, but I can't take that one slider down all the way. Um, how's it going? It is... It's good to be back. Sorry I couldn't join you last night. Um... Between between Mrs. C Sharp Fritz and my daughters, we got a little bit crossed crossed over and uh, weren't able to make things happen yesterday for Tuesday stream. My apologies, but we'll be here Wednesday. We'll be here tomorrow, Friday, and Sunday. So, uh, Denny DeClerc, first time here. Welcome. It's great to encourage first timers here. If you like what you see, if you have a good time here, I want to encourage you, click the follow button. It's the little heart button that you see just above the video. We're on a little follower push. You see the little gauge right here below my shoulder. We're trying to get to 8,000 followers by September 15th. And my promise to you, our Twitch community, if we get to 8,000 followers, I'm going to dye my beard rainbow. But not just dye it rainbow, but I'm going to dye it rainbow for .NET Conf. That's that virtual online event that I'll be hosting live from Microsoft Studios and TwitchCon. As a salute to you, as a thanks to you, yes, I'll be on with a number of folks named... Um, and we'll be... Uh, we'll have that rainbow beard as a salute to you, as a thanks to you um, for helping grow our community here. Thanks so much. 12.07 a.m. Oh my gosh, Dracnik. Wow, that is really early. Good afternoon, Agent Coder. Code Zappy, hello. Uh, Robert Stefan... <clears throat> uh, Robert Stefan... Uh, Stefanston. Good to see you. First time, welcome. Um, oh, thank you for that very kind cheer. Um, you know what? I turned off the alerts just for one thing last night. Let me turn them back on. I had them turned off, but I very much appreciate the cheer. Thank you very much. And with all cheers, all subscriptions that we have here on channel, I will, I will be making a donation to Coder Dojo. Thank you very much for that. We want to grow. Just Robert Stefan, not a problem. We will make, we will remember that going forward. Is the audio a little out of sync? You know what? It does look it. That's weird. Wow. Yeah, what's going on there? Um, I haven't changed any settings, so I wonder what happened. Same camera, same everything else. Hmm. I'm going to have to take a look into that another time. I want to get into our project. Um, and you won't be able to see too much of my face once I shrink down and I'm, and I'm in the lower corner here as we write our code. But I'll follow up with that a little bit later. Um, yeah, but yes, it is, it's like a half second out of sync. I don't think I have a filter or anything on my webcam to delay, no. Yeah, let me... It, it's the video is a, is just slightly behind. All right, I will do some research on that. I promise you for next time. Um, let me get some music playing in the background, and we'll get in. And we'll talk about the project we're going to work on today. Of course, I play music to code by here on stream, and today, um, today I'm going to play. Let me play yellow today. Oh, and the camera's all out of focus too. I bet you know what? I bet you. There's something in my, my... The video settings here on this camera have gone a little crazy. Um, turn off that autofocus. Let me see. What else here? 
Uh, I don't see anything else. And I'm going to be getting out of this camera soon anyway. Now it's really far behind. Oh my goodness. Hey, Copper Beardy. Good to see you. Um... So this is yellow. This is from Music to Code By. This is music that's been engineered. It's been scientifically designed to get you in the groove, to get you focused on whatever task it is that you might have to do, whether it's code, homework, chores around the house. Check it out, mtcb.poop.com. There's a complete album there you can download. You can buy and download for just a couple bucks. Um, each song is 25 minutes long. It's about the same length as a Pomodoro. Listen to the song once, take a break, Go, you know, get a beverage, whatever it is that you need to do, stretch your legs, come back and get focused on your on the task again. And you'll be productive, you'll have a great time. Thanks so much, Carl, for letting us listen to your music while we write some code together live on stream. All right, let me head over to our project and we'll talk about what we're going to be doing today because I'm not just going to write code, we're going to update some stuff here. Let's head over, there we go. Yeah, it's weird. There's definitely a delay here, and I'm, I, it's going to weird me out here throughout the rest of the our session together today. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So, ASP.NET Core um, 3.0 Preview 7 was released. Let me grab the blog post. I believe it's this, there it is, there we go, this is from our friend Mr. Dan Roth, introducing all kinds of new features that were released yesterday as part of the preview release. So, um, really happy to see these updates. Um, .NET Core 3 is now the default runtime in the latest Visual Studio preview. I've already got, I believe I've already got that version installed, so we should be all right there. The ASP.NET Core templates are now the are now at the top level, so that when you search for a project, you don't have to go find a web project and then select all the other things inside those projects. They're now at the top level and they're simplified. Um, attribute splatting for components. This I'm. I'm not quite sure I fully understand, and I think I want to read through that together with you and see if we can understand this together. Data binding support for type converters and generics. I think I know what that means, but we'll take a look at that. Clarified which directive attributes expect HTML versus C sharp. Which directive attributes expect HTML versus C sharp? Yeah, okay, I know what that is. Event counters we can now turn on for our application. Um, HTTPS in the gRPC templates, nice. So a lot of updates for gRPC. As you see, the gRPC templates become more and more of a first-class citizen, as we expect with the release of .NET Core 3. Us mortals don't have the Visual Studio update yet. Um, I thought I had it. Let me look at the installer here as it turns off everything on the screen. There we go. So I only install the public previews. Yeah, I'm on the preview four. So we should be up to date with this, right? If I look at available, yeah. So this is the one that I normally use here on stream is the Visual Studio public preview. I don't show the internal previews anymore. Is it 16.16? Uh, 16.16 is the RTM version. Yeah, the 16.2 preview four is the the one that I have been using. Yeah, th there was a delay in in the release of Visual Studio. I thought I heard from Dan. But this is the one that I'm currently using. Um, and a CLI tool for managing gRPC code generation. I'm not going to do any work with gRPC today, but I definitely want to go through and talk about these three and then do the update to our project. So, um, I want to make sure I point out I am wearing my Visual Studio hat today be as a as a thanks to our friend uh, Code Rushed, Mark Miller, 
the um he put together a fanfare for me on his stream and it is just amazing um i want to link that in chat here um because oh my gosh copper beardy you're right it was it's an amazing fanfare it's a i want to thank him um i think we're going to raid him a little bit later let me copy that in so much fun and a and a uh yeah a nice thank you to him i'm gonna wear uh, the visual studio hat that he calls out in that fanfare video um all right let's see looking forward to seeing what he's doing for me yeah copper beardy he's he does some really neat things so there are there's a new version of the sdk we need to make sure we have that before we go any further here it is sdk 3010 100 i'm sorry preview 7 so let me grab the x64 installer for that we'll let that download here in the background um install the latest preview i've yeah, I've already got that. Um, it requires at least 2019-16-3, preview 1. I... Which version do I have? 16-2, so I don't have the right version to work with this. Bummer. So I can't go too much further with this, actually. Wow. That really puts a crimp in things, doesn't it? They, sh they said it should work in most cases. Okay. Thank you, Ancient Coder, for the shout-out to Code Rushed. Um, a usable example for the type converter would be nice, says Stelzy. The doc is not that clear on how to use it properly. Yeah, I agree. Hey, Carrie, good to see you. Um, so we, it recommends we follow the migration steps. Um, and... It also wants us to do this. Look at these breaking changes. I know there's breaking changes between 16... Uh, I'm sorry, between Preview 5 and Preview 6. There's some big breaking changes in there. And, and we've run face-first into them, especially around Entity Framework. And that's one of the things that's kept us from going to, to Preview 6. Um, I'm hoping we're in a little bit better position and we can continue to use our, um, our Postgres provider. Um, otherwise, I, I'm going to have to move to SQLite. I, I can't stay on that older preview for too much longer. Um, I don't want to use Visual Studio Code either. <clears throat> if you saw us during the ASP.NET workshop, uh, it was it was really bad. We th There was something disconnected, not working quite right. I don't know if it's a version of C Sharp that I have installed, but it it is not working with ASP.NET Core on my machine. So, um, normalcy will return in a couple weeks. Can't wait back. Can't wait to get back in the swing of things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, da -da -da. latest visual studio preview includes .NET 3, .NET Core 3. Okay. Simplified web templates. Specifically, the cookie consent UI is no longer included by default. I think European folks would would disagree with this being removed by default. Um, in fact, I think. Oh my gosh, Carrie. Colon D. <laughs> Thank you very much for that kind cheer, and we'll make another donation to uh, Coder Dojo. <clears throat> All right. Um. Right, the cookie consent thing is is really a requirement in Europe, and if you do not have that cookie consent thing, there are major fines that that you will receive if you don't have that. Major. Um. So I'm I I'm not sure I agree with that removal. Even Americans, it does not matter if a European can touch your website. I don't care if you're in the middle of of somewhere Kansas doesn't matter they will come and get you they will find you you take one step onto European soil and uh, and good night they yeah you're gonna have a, a big problem totally totally 
Um, wow, Tun uh, Tunka Yalt, is that correct? Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. This is another pitfall you can fall into if you're not aware for it. Aware of it? Yes. Um, it's it it's you've got to understand that the web is international. If you publish something that somebody from another country can touch your website and you don't abide by the laws in their country, doesn't matter if you don't know the laws in their country. If you don't abide by it, you will have a problem. Uh, feature updates that can be added later via scaffolding as a longer term solution. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about why this decision was made. Because I'm, I'm, yeah. Scripts and related static assets are now referenced as local files instead of using CDNs based on the current environment. This makes sense to me. We're already delivering all these things and adding a whole bunch of CDN, uh, CDN juggling there that a lot of folks didn't really use. Um, so that does make it a little bit simpler. I, I appreciate this movement. Um, attribute splatting for components. This I'm not quite sure I fully understand here. Components can now be can now capture and render additional attributes in addition to the components declared parameters. Oh. Attributes. Okay. Does anybody know what that means? Does this term, chat room, help me out here. Give me an F in the chat room if attribute splatting is something that you don't understand just by reading what that is. I'm not even going to show the text on screen for a second. Attribute splatting. It's right there. Do you know what that means? If you don't know what that means, put an F in the chat room for me. Okay. And if you do know what attribute splatting is, put a 1 in the chat room. And I can total this up later. Now, some of you know because you, you've been working with the preview, some of the nightly builds. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm seeing about a 3 to 1. The term attribute catch-all would be brighter. Yes, Delsey. That's exactly where I was going to go. This is a very American, very colloquial term. I'm not thrilled with it, and I would prefer something like attribute catch-all. Yeah, musical bookworm with an F there as well. Jaco's warts. Okay. So when when I when I read this, I I like the term Stelzi uses. Attribute catch-all. Um, additional attributes can be captured and then splatted into an element as part of the components rendering use, using the new attributes razor directive. That makes sense to me. What was the R that just went by there? What was that? I don't see it in chat. Splat is used in Python. Okay. But by looking and doing a quick poll of folks that are here in this chat room, it's not common. It's not a common term. Just listening to the podcast on .NET Rocks. Oh, thank you for joining us. Um, so other front-end frameworks don't even use splat. Ah, oh, it was the register on naming his heart. That's what came in. But it doesn't catch all. What do you mean it doesn't catch all? Catch, capture unmatched attributes. Right? That's what I would call it. Capture unmatched attributes for components. Yeah. Right? I Capturing unmatched at, uh, attributes for components would match that parameter right there and make it easy to make that correlation from, from a piece of code to that. I, I have concern about that term. Maybe, maybe when it gets to the official documentation... We can do we can do something a little bit more with that. To define a component that accepts arbitrary attributes, define a component parameter using the parameter attribute with the capture unmatched attribute and set the property to true. So what this is saying is that when you when you reference the, your component, anything that it doesn't recognize, right? Any other attributes in that HTML 
tag will get dropped into this dictionary so that you can analyze it later. That's pretty cool. That's the same as having that that in C sharp that params uh, parameter inside of a method call. That makes sense. Hey, honey pop, welcome. Um, doesn't it state if you use it that you can only have this one attribute? No, I thought you could have others. That accepts arbitrary attributes. Define a component parameter using capture unmatched. The type of the parameter must be assigned. This means that I enumerable blah 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 are also options. Um, allows that parameter to match all attributes that do not match any other parameter. So, um, Stelzy, that tells me that I can have other parameters, other attributes on my component, and we'll collect that as well. SNB. SNB just resubscribed for 15 months. Mega Bazinga. Mega Bazinga indeed. Thank you so much for the resub. 15 months. I really appreciate that. And we'll make another donation to Coder Dojo this quarter. Matched or known, so un capture unmatched. Yeah, it's kind of a dump all. It's ca uh, capture all at that point. So, Honey Pop loves Preview 7's new features. It's making life so much easier. Looks like it, yeah. Using at attributes to render arbitrary attributes. At attributes to render arbitrary attributes. Oh my gosh! Imperial just resubscribed for four months. Fritz, you're an amazing human, and I'm glad to call you friend. Wow! Three. Thank you so much, Imperial, for that very kind subscription. There she is. Thank you very, very much. And we'll make another donation to Coder Dojo. Coder Dojo. Easy for me to say. Uh, they're, of course, helping folks build new facilities. And Honey Pop is subscribing. Oh, my gosh. Honey this Pop just subscribed. The sub train is hot. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're all, we're gonna make donations to Coder Dojo. They're helping build facilities to to teach other folks how to all about technology and to teach trainers so that we can grow and give people all around the world an opportunity in this industry. Um, I'm a big fan of what Coder Dojo is doing. A number of folks that have joined us here in stream have have taught at Coder Dojos, and uh, I'm gonna continue and encourage that growth. Thank you so much to all of our subs there that just joined in. And it's great to see Imperial joining us. Thank you so much. It's, um, yeah, easy for me to say all that stuff. All right, so we're we're going through, we're reviewing some of these new features in the Preview 7 version of the framework, and we'll talk about converting our application here in just a little bit. So can we get a shout out to Imperial while we're here? I want to make sure folks know about her stream and check her out a little bit later today. She's a variety streamer between... She was working on a cosplay one day, um, playing different games, all kinds of great stuff that I'm sure you're going to enjoy checking out here on Twitch. Thanks so much, Ancient Coder. All right. At attributes to render arbitrary attributes. Uh, let's let's see if we can understand it. Component can pass arbitrary attributes to another component or markup element using the at attributes directive attribute. Okay, so using that, the the directive. I'm I'm going to stop saying at attributes just because that's confusing the the snot out of me. Oh my goodness. Michael Jolly's here. Hello, hello. Um, what happened? What did you know? I know it's so confusing. Words are hard, yes. Um, allows you to specify a collection of attributes to pass to a markup element or component. This is valuable because the set of key value pairs specified as attributes can come from a .NET collection and, you do, and do not need to be specified. So you're passing them from one component to another? Is that what this is telling? Using the add attributes directive, the contents of the attribute property get splatted once it, okay, get expanded into the input element. If this results in duplicate attributes, then evaluation of attributes occurs from left to right. In the above example, if, uh, da, 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 if it contains a value for class, it would supersede class form field, this one, because it comes after it. So it takes that, okay, that makes sense. And if it contains a type, this value would take over for what's in there. Okay, that makes sense. I get that. Bunny ears splatted. No, no, no. 
If this is the first time the window desktop runtime has been included. Um, no, the Windows desktop features have been involved in .NET Core 3 since the first preview. So, good morning, Sean. Good to see you. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, the big question with Preview 7 is, does it break Xamarin on the Mac? That's a good question for some of our, our uh, Xamarin friends. Um, I would reach out to... Uh, Clancy's been streaming a bit because he's working as part of the Microsoft... Uh, part of the Microsoft... Um, one week hack week that they're doing. All the employees are, are doing hack projects this week to figure out how different ways we can use existing products and explore concepts for new products. Um, so Clancy's taking part in that. I would reach out to James Montemagno. He's another stream here. Streamer here. Both of them are streamers here and members of the Live Coders team. Um, and you can reach out to them and ask them questions here. Absolutely. Um, am I going to release the code now that P7 is production ready? What code? I, honey, I don't know. You like the idea of a hack week? Yes. Um, thank you for the follow, 70H1. All right, welcome. Um, there we go. It's no, it's uh, Dave, David Ortenow is streaming as part of the hack week as well. Yes. Data binding support for type converters and generics. Um, so you can have a type converter now that'll help you convert things from one type to another, of course, inside your code. Um, and data bind through there? Okay. Data binding also now works great with generics. Where do I declare that data binding? And that type converter? I don't. Yeah, I, I agree with the comment from earlier. This isn't a very good demo. I need to see where and how to hook up that. Um, the Hugo doll just resubscribed for eight months. Eight months? Wasn't I just a seven months a month ago? <laughs> Thank you so much, Hugo. I appreciate that sub. Yeah, we'll make another donation to Coder Dojo. Very cool. Um... Th this isn't a very good explanation or code demo as to what's going on here. I, I would want to dig in a little bit further to understand this. Um, so I'm going to skip that right now. Clarify which directive attributes expect HTML versus... I think this is supposed to be C sharp. Um, before, button on click, at on click, click me, after, at, button, at on click, equals on click. Alright, so hang on a second. Razor, com in preview six, we introduced directive attributes as a common syntax by specifying event, event handlers at on click and data binding at bind. That syntax. This is something that changed from uh, preview five to preview six, and I'm going to have to fix in our code. Um, still hasn't got it right. It was HTML versus. Yeah. Dan said he had trouble on on a pound sign on the markup. All right. Um, I can edit that. And it's whatever. Um, specifically, event hit. All right. In this update, we've cleaned up which of the built-in directive attributes expect C sharp and HTML. Specifically, event handlers now expect C sharp values. So leading at character is no longer required when specifying the event handler value. Okay. So, where I was able to get away with this syntax before without the at sign in front. Now, we flip-flopped syntax entirely. And it, you need to put the at in front. Okay. I can buy that. I, I can follow along with that. Okay. So, event counters. Right. I'm not going to get into event counters or signal R too much today. Okay. I think, I think I'm good with that. Let me kick off the install of the SDK here. And I'll open our project and we can start doing a little bit of this update. And um I want to convert I'm gonna convert it so it runs in the browser now that we have um authentication and authorization running in the browser with uh with Blazor.
Johnny Sparkles having the best day ever. Congratulations, Johnny. Great news there. We can celebrate that. Absolutely. There we go. Well done, Johnny. There we go. Big hype. Yeah, absolutely. Look at all the emotes. All right. Processing previous version. Previously. Um, come on. Come on. Do it. Do it. Get rid of that thing. I gotta this is really bothering me why that camera is just a half second behind. There was a Razer update that I installed. I wonder if... I wonder if I need to reboot or something. Um, let's see here. Tim Blazer. Cheers. Hey, good to see you. All right. Installation was successful. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. Good. Um, Angry Little Hamster says, Think we'll ever have .NET Core install not requiring elevated privileges. Our IT security policies prevent elevated privileges on Windows machines. Um... The only reason it needs elevated privileges is because it's putting it down in the program files directory. And it's putting something into into the path. Uh, yes, Razer, the peripheral company. I use a Razer Keo here. Is is the camera that I'm currently using. Um, I have a Sony Alpha 6000 camera that I'm I'm trying to get installed here, but i got to move around things here on my, uh, on my desk and get that installed. Um, you can deploy a, a .NET Core app as standalone and you do not need admin privileges correct um, but you need for the SDK that's that's where folks are running into a little bit of an issue um, yeah you can download a zip of it and put it down wherever you'd like that is a good point Right. Uh, if I go over here to the preview, right, not just the installer, but you can grab the binaries and put them down wherever you'd like. Then you don't need the admin privileges. So then, right, put it into some other folder where you have have it in the path, and away you go. That's definitely doable. Yeah, on Linux, folks are doing the binaries and zip approach. Absolutely, you can do that as well. So, um, we're going to do this. We're going to migrate, not from 2.2 to 3.0, but we're going to do a migration um, from an older version here. I want to take a look at what the bro breaking changes are here. Um, SignalR JavaScript client changing package name. That's not hitting me yet as part of this. Uh, connection adapters, adapters have been removed. I don't know what that is. Uh, so, I'm not going to worry about that. It's not something at a level of application that I know something about. Um, extensions caching SQL Server is now using SQL Client. Good. SignalR, SignalR. Debugger, debug logger class made internal. Okay. Uh, breaking change in JavaScript interop. That could be a problem. Uh, transport abstractions have been removed and made public instead of pubternal. Okay. Kestrel request trail headers moved into a new collection. Mm. Default bootstrap version of identity UI changed to 4. That's a good change. That was made back in preview 5. So we're okay at this point. These are older going further down. So I'm pretty okay. What happened here in JavaScript interrupt? Frank! Thanks so much for the host and the raid. Oh my goodness. Welcome raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz. And uh... We wrote code here on my stream, and we're actually looking at uh, ASP.NET Core 3 and updating an application from uh, ASP.NET Core 3 Preview 5 to Preview 7. I had a little bit of an issue with database connection thing as part of Preview 6. So we're going to update to Preview 7 and uh, see if that works. Thank you for the Defend Ancient Coder. Um, let me see. Did I miss? Did I miss some comments here? Um, let's see here. Uh, 
Tommy says, did you try Blazer out? Tried it out yesterday. It's pretty cool and easy. It is. It is very cool. Um, and we're going to convert the application we've been working on that's server-side Blazor components to client-side with uh, WebAssembly. Lots of positive in the chat room. Look at that. 83% positive in the chat room right now. Love seeing that. Thanks so much, chat room. Great to see you today. Let me see what happened here in JavaScript Interop. In, in 3.0 Preview 6, we're migrating JavaScript Interop to use the system text JSON-based serializer. As part of this transition, there are several breaking changes to the JS Interop library. Okay. Before JSON.serialize, JSON.deserialize some object. After, you have to put a using statement. And now it's JSON serializer, two string JSON serializer dot parse. Why wouldn't you alias that? Reroutes, you're using the same methods. I mean, okay, you can break it because you're still in a preview. But Hugo, sentiment command. What do you think this what do you I don't have a sentiment command, but what do you think what do you think we should do with that? Um yeah, uh, Frank, what were you, what happened over in your in your uh, in your stream? Um, let us know so next time we can follow and, and join you can we get a shout out for Frank in the channel please and uh, you just did your first blazer app proof of concept developing on Linux you run the SDK in a container and use Visual Studio code in a remote dev nice uh, thank you honey pop for the <laughs> shout out nice ah, I see what you did there um, what well, yeah um, Hugo it, Give me a suggestion. What should a sentiment uh, command do? Uh, Matt says, this is an awesome stream. Increase positivity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Tunkealt. Ton Am I pronouncing that right? Mm. What is... Is Blazor the new Angular killer? I don't know that it's an Angular killer. But it's a way for folks that, that like C Sharp, that like... Um, that, that are .NET developers to run their applications in the browser. And I think that's very appealing to folks who have been struggling with, with the connections and the speed of changes in Angular that are not entirely backwards compatible, that are... Um, while interesting, some of their features compelling, they're, they're taking their time with some of the updates. They don't see a good enterprise story is some of the feedback that I've heard. A good enterprise story for maintenance of Angular when folks have committed to say Angular 4 <clears throat> and they need to use that application for 5-10 years and uh, they see dramatic changes in the framework. Blazor is very handy for C-sharp developers. Hugo was, is suggesting for that sentiment uh, command a brief explanation of the sentiment analysis. That's that's not a bad idea. Okay. Um, can you do me a favor and and can we open an issue in the? Let me show you out here on my GitHub. I actually have. Type it correctly. Um, all of our features that we use here on stream, like the sentiment analysis, we built ourselves here. Oh gosh, our stream tools aren't building right now. Um, but can we create an issue here? Um, yeah, need to notify on the cooldown period. That's a good idea. But here's our list of issues for the stream tools. Um, drop a line in here for what we think that senti sentiment should do. Um, there's some other great ideas that we had in here we were talking with Lennon about. Um, about, no, I don't see it here. Ah, here we are, sentiment widget. Maybe having a graph available aggregate over time periods and overall sentiment some other ideas of what we should do with this and we talked about this way back in february but i think there's a great opportunity here to expand on that this month I, um i am i am taking some time away from stream to work through this resource management application um so we can get something delivered and we can talk to the client talk to the customer about it and 
um, do that customer discussion, that interview live on stream, and and push this along so that they can start using it and solve some of their problems. Yeah, it looks like there's a broken build here. Let me click through on this. Um, just to take a look and see why. Um, thank you for the follow. Is that is that Vo Voitino? Thanks so much for the follow. Yeah, a live interview on stream. Um, you've seen me do pair programming streams here before. It's always a lot of fun. Um, I see, what do we got here? VS test failed with error. There might be failed tests. 38 passed, one failed. What failed? Um, unknown command to provide help with. Ah, uh, you know what? I changed the John Skeet command. It's no longer just Skeet, it's John Skeet. Right? So if you execute the John Skeet command, you know that John Skeet can divide by zero. Right? There we go. All kinds of great facts about John Skeet taken from the Stack Overflow meta that are available. Um, how did I select the URL? Which URL, King? In the chat room. Um... <laughs> Oh, how did I how did I get through to here? Um, Twelve percent sentiment. Oh no, chat. The issue URL. I copied everything before the question. Um, chat is stop it with the sadness there, honey. Oh my goodness. Um, all I did was right. I just clicked in there. Right when you click the first time, it highlights everything. I clicked the second time and just moved the cursor, and then shift home and it highlighted. Is uh. Is, yeah, right? I don't think Karnak is running here in the background so you can see my keystrokes. There we go. Um, the size download issue likely to improve in future versions for Blazor. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, HB Listown. Hello from Morocco. Well, hello in Morocco. Thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, yeah, look at, <laughs> look at the folks trying to increase sentiment there with the very kind comments there thank you so much <laughs> this is great yeah get that back over 50 percent. thank you <laughs> yeah i think we're cheating here <laughs> king's dialed in from bangladesh oh my gosh thank you king um i i've um I've got, I've got an idea for putting together a little extension. Uh, there's a couple of extensions that'll do this, but I'd love to put together a little extension that's either just below me here on the Twitch wall um, or maybe on another website that I'm, I'm actually working on um, that, that has kind of like a pin map and shows <clears throat> at a high level, right? Not specific locations, but some of the countries where, where our friends, where our viewers um, have tuned in our, and are watching from. Um, just to kind of show that anybody anywhere can join in and, and have a good time learning about uh, learning about technology together here on stream. <laughs> Compile Nix. Wow. Tacos, 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 says John Calloway. Yes. Um, King asks, do I have a CS or am I self-taught? Um, I do have a, a bachelor's degree in management sciences and information systems from the Pennsylvania State University. Penn State. Um, and uh, it, I did not get a computer science degree, but I am mostly self-taught. Um, we learned a little bit of programming in college, but uh, one thing that you learn quickly in this industry is um, learning is a, a very good skill because things are always changing. Like this version of ASP.NET. All right. Um, so I will need to, I'm going to create an issue here, right? Um, fix tests that reference, um, skeet command to now reference John Skeet. And I'll fix this, right? This is a bug. You know what? If somebody wants to help out with that, more power to you. <clears throat> you can submit, uh, you can submit a pull request to fix that and we'll merge that in. We'll put your name on the on the crawl up above to thank you for your contributions. When John Skeet's code fails the, uh, to compile, the compiler apologizes. Yes. Yes. Um, 
the Simeon makes a very good point here. You don't need a computer science degree. You just need to have a deductive brain. You need to think somewhat logically. <laughs> Be a glutton for punishment. Yes. Um, yeah, you do. There's there's a lot to be said about um, being able to read books, being able to, and books not so much anymore, but being able to learn quickly and adapt quickly. There are some computer science-y things around algorithms and the way processors work that would be beneficial to understand. Certainly as you get into multi-threaded programming, those concepts are very important. And as we look at things like um, artificial intelligence and machine learning, it's very beneficial to have that background. Frank asks, the bot is in C-sharp. Yes, this bot that we wrote is in C-sharp, written completely by hand. Um, no frameworks involved in this at all. Good Tom Hunting, thank you for joining us. I appreciate the follow. Ultra Hal, welcome. Uh, Jeremy Knight suggests the Imposter's Handbook is so good for things like that. Jeremy, do you have a link to the Imposter's Handbook? That'd be great to share here in chat. Um, King says, I have zero certificates, yet a software engineer making 300 times more than 99% of the educated people in Bangladesh. Well, well said. There's, there's something to be said about being self-educated and being able to reach out and, and help yourself, help grow your career, um, in this field. Pixelogic Dev with the raid. Oh my goodness. Welcome, Pixelogic Dev. Thank you so much for joining. Oh my gosh, look at all this. Can we defend, please? Exclamation point, defend in the channel. And uh, we'll get the bot echoing. It, there we go. Look at all the look at all the emotes going flying by. Here they come. Thanks so much. Wow. Pixel Logic Dev, thanks so much for the raid. Um, welcome, raiders. My name is Jeff Fritz. I'm a I'm a .NET developer. I write code here on stream. Um, you can find out all about me in the about box that's right below me here on video. Um, and we're working on updating a project to ASP.NET Core 3.0 Preview 7, the version that was just released yesterday, is that Kia Summon, thank you so much for the follow, and Del Wayne, thanks so much for the follow as well. I appreciate that. We're heading towards this 8,000 follower goal for September 15th. If we reach 8,000 before September 15th, I'm going to dye my beard rainbow. And you're ruining sentiment. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a Microsoft employee raid, is it? Oh, my goodness. Thanks so much. Um, it's great to have colleagues joining us, always in stream. Um, I usually work with preview versions of the .NET Framework and Visual Studio here on stream, and we learn about all the new features as they're being released building a project today we're building a project for a non-profit organization um the dk bay says i like you like my voice huh um let me touch on something real quick pixelogic dev things are going very well here thank you so much for the raid um can i get a shout out for pixelogic dev and um and uh pixelogic dev what were you working on uh on your stream before you joined us and john does need tacos can we get a tacos command Drop an issue here on the Stream Tools project. In fact, you're welcome to submit a pull request if you'd like, and we can add the tacos command. There's actually a, if you look at the project here, there's actually an app settings that lists text commands like that. And you can just add a tacos command. We'll merge it in and it'll be available here on stream. So you're very much welcome to put that through if you'd like. Um, so there was a comment earlier uh, from DK Bay about liking my voice. So um, I've experimented with doing voiceover work. Um, I've done a number of um, um, IVR menus, right? Interactive voice response menus for companies. Um, I've even read a number of uh, radio commercials for folks. Um, last night, <coughs> I... Um, some of my friends on Discord have had suggested, hey, you know, what if you read a poem? What if you read uh, uh, this chapter from a book? It, it would sound funny. It would be fun. It'd be, it would sound great. And I, I did that a few nights ago, and it was it, it turned out really well. Last night, I experimented and, and recorded about 10, 12 minutes of me reading the first chapter of the public domain book, The Invisible Man. And it, I, did not, I did not stream it, but it went very well. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is in the evenings here in East Coast time, um, I'll figure out a schedule here, but I think starting tonight, I want to, I'm going to read that f a, a chapter or two of a book, um, but I'm going to be reading it in the mindset of I'm recording it for publication. So the live recording that you see here on Twitch, I may go back and reread sentences. The text is visible behind me the whole time. And um, I turn off all the, all the alerts. I will not acknowledge chat until the end of a chapter. And a chapter takes five, 10 minutes to read through. But um, I will edit down the video and put it on YouTube in its own playlist so that you'll have a playlist of me reading an entire book. And I'll publish all of those uh, as MP3s so that you'll have an audiobook of me reading whatever public domain book it is that we choose to read over over that month, maybe. Um, it's an experiment. It's an attempt to, to try something new here on Twitch. Um, we'll try reading a book or two and see how it goes. But that's, that's what I'm thinking about here. Um, uh, wow, uh, DK Bait. That's what I'm thinking about. So we'll see how it goes. Um, like I said, I've experimented. It always got to try something, experiment with something new. Bedtime stories with C Sharp Fritz says Lil Kaza. Yeah, yeah. So we'll um, we'll give it a try. Um, I follow you. The videos from Morocco, love them. Well, thank you um, very much for that. I I appreciate it. Um, I could narrate the audiobook version of the book you're going to work on. Says the Hugo Doll. We're actually going to do a little bit more. I am writing a. I am getting ready to write a book here. Um, it's going to be on updating ASP.NET websites to ASP.NET with Blazor. Um, we're actually going to do something very special with that. I'm frozen. No, we're not frozen. We're good. Uh, thank you for the follow, little Kaza, as well. Did you just read it or did you perform it? AKA Unique Voices. I did do a little bit of performing C17. Relevant Jesse, anyone else having issues with the stream? There is just this slight delay in the video in my audio, and we're going to fix that. So, um, let's see. You learned about Imposter's Handbook, watching, listening to Scott Hanselman. Yes, yes, yes. Um, is the resource management app going to get new bits? We're, we're, we're going to do that next. Here, live. We're going to... Do it live! The refresh button will refresh the page. So, um, what I've seen, I've seen a couple issues with Twitch where it'll pause video. If you pause the video when it stops, like, look at that, I'm getting green screen blur there. What is that? Um, and replay it, it'll kick up and start working again. So, so if you want to add a command to the, to the bot, there it was in the Fritz Stream Tools project. Let me reopen that. And it's in this app settings file. And if, if you'd like to suggest a text command, go right ahead. Send it out there and we will um, we'll load it up. We'll make sure that we uh, have that available for folks here on streams. Why suffixes are command? Um, so that you know that these things are commands. It's these are commands that the bot understands. So, um, do, 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 there was, let me back up here. Uh, Relevant Jesse says you, you should do a romantic C sharp reading. Mrs. C sharp Fritz would need to approve that first. I'm not entirely opposed to it, but I would want to go through and make sure that she approves it first. For the layperson, what are the top three reasons to program with Blazor? Asks Angry Little Hamster. Great question. Oh my gosh. Can we get ready to clip this? What are the top three reasons to program with Blazor? Um, let me head over here and I'll actually go to the blazor.net website. Um, there it is, Blazor. Um, if you're a .NET developer, programming with Blazor just feels right because you're going to continue using C Sharp. The same reasons that folks um, like using Node, it's you have the same language that's building both your back-end application 
building your microservices because you're already comfortable with C-Sharp and with .NET. Using Blazor means you can take that knowledge all the way forward and run in the browser. Second, you're gonna, if you're using Blazor, of course, you're running WebAssembly. That means you've got your application, it runs using that same C-Sharp knowledge, that same C-Sharp language and tooling on every browser. This isn't a plugin, this isn't a runtime that's specific to just Microsoft. Everybody can use it. You're gonna be productive, you're gonna be able to, to use, and I don't think it's listed here, and it's part of this one. The third thing that I would say is, you're also able to build these uh, a very strong component model. And this was one of the backbones of ASP.NET web forms way back in the day was the component model. Being able to build and share components that other folks can use and that you can reuse in your applications. Folks love using this and that's why you see other component-based frameworks in JavaScript taking off, right? Angular with its directives and its component model, Vue with its capabilities. They all take off about that because they're ab folks are able to reuse components from one page to the next and see some productivity increase and improvement. Blazor does also give you the ability to do JavaScript interop. There it is, I said it again. And allow your C-sharp code to work with the JavaScript natively in the browser. So, it is far more than web forms indeed, yes. And, and that's what you're going to see with the book that I'm writing. Um, you're going to, and maybe we even get into writing some of that here on stream and building some of the samples at, as we get to that point in the August time frame. Um, but there's, there's a lot for web forms developers that they will really appreciate in Blazor. And it's my job as part of writing this book to ensure that you have a good experience and you understand why you want to do that update. All right. Do, 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 do. Um, and uh, the Simeon asks, what browser plugin gives me the si side navigation tree on GitHub? This is called OctoTree. There you go. Right now, oh, you can't see it here behind me. If I mouse away from it, you see OctoTree appears here. So that's available, that plugin's available for um, all the major browsers. You can run it in Edge with Chromium, in Chrome, and in Firefox. There you go. All right. So what's the smiley face at the bottom of the screen and the number, asks the DK Bay. <laughs> that's the chat room sentiment. That's how happy the chat room is. As it gets closer to 100%, it's really happy. And the arrow shows the trending direction. The smiley face shows the most recent messages, whether they were detected as happy positive or not positive. I don't want to say negative. You've turned off the mouse over, stops me accidentally triggering it as you move between screens. Okay, that's cool. How does it know if we're happy? There's sentiment analysis that's being done on Azure. We send the text messages out to Azure, it analyzes it and sends back a number. And we're going to change that to ml.net in the next few weeks here. That's coming up. Caparino asks, is Blazor only used for small, medium projects? How it scales with large projects? Um, we're in preview. Don't know yet. Folks are still working on the compiler so that things compile down and run nice and small in the browser. Because if it's WebAssembly, that means you're shipping DLLs to the folks that are visiting. All right. Um, we're about an hour in here, and we haven't written any code yet. So, uh, you know what? We got to... And get to some code here. All right, chat room. Couldn't clip it. Limited to 60 seconds and missed the beginning. Ah, rats. All right, maybe we can edit that down later. Uh, let's see. What did I miss here? What did I miss? Okay, we're good. Um, we can rig, rig sentiment by saying everything is awesome because everything in this chat room... No, no, don't just say everything is awesome. Say it with feeling. Say it like... And please don't freak out. All right, all right. Um, Tofu Lock has an opinion about the large file size shipping over DLLs. People will complain about it, but then they send like five large images over their <laughs> over in their JavaScript application, which takes up the majority of the size anyway. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There were a few decades between those two songs, indeed. <laughs> um. 
All right, let's get into this. We've we've talked about a lot about here's the updates, here's what's changed here. Let's talk about doing this migration. Let's do this update to the preview 7 version. Now I think there is a earlier version. You know what? I don't Where was it? I thought there was an earlier version of this that says here's how to update. I don't see it between versions of ASP.NET, the ASP.NET Core Preview. And I don't see it. Hmm. ASP.NET to ASP.NET Core, no, 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 no. Um, what if I change this to the 3.0? Will it be there? No. No oh, rats. Opt into runtime compilation. Um, no, I'm not going to do that just yet. Oh, why use Blazor? Oh, fantastic. Ancient Coder. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yep, there's the ML.net. We're going to get into that later. All right. Um... I'm going to copy that clip, if you don't mind, Ancient Coder, and I'm just going to write a quick tweet here. Um, uh, we answered the question, why use Blazor on stream? And here's the answer. There we go. put that out there so that folks uh, get a little bit of information and there's the link in chat fantastic <laughs> all right um, so let's do this let's see if we can do this update now right if I go back not that one right there was directions for how to do the update up at the top of this wasn't there ah, upgrade an existing project Follow the migration steps. See also to upgrade an existing 3.0 preview 6 to preview 7. Update the ASP.NET Core package references to 3.0 preview 7 19.365.7. And that's it. No. Now, there was a, there was, there's always going to be a couple seconds between uh, tweets and things that I run and uh, you seeing it here on stream. Oh my gosh. Uh, Remus and NetCodies, thanks so much for the follows. I appreciate that, and it's going to help us with our follower goal. And welcome to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. So is Blazor kind of like Laravel for C Sharp? Um, uh, let me make sure I know what you're referencing with Laravel. Free open source PHP web framework. Um... No, it's a little bit different. Zero, zero six. Thank you so much for the follow as well. It is. It's like React for C Sharp. Taco, Taco, Taco says Eternal Dev Coder. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know that triggers some people. Let me get the latest Blazor templates. So I'm going to execute this command uh, in... Oh, wait a sec. I'm still not seeing my, my hotkeys. I'm still... There it is. Oh! What happened to you, Karnak? Right? It's not showing there at all. Can I... I'm gonna restart Karnak. Because I, I know you want to see the hotkeys. There they are. Now we can see the hotkeys. <coughs> All right, I'm going to head over to the resource management project that I have here on disk. And I'm going to paste in that .NET new statement so I get the latest version of the Blazor templates. I got a new version of .NET Core. So the .NET SDK, so I've got that installing. And there's all of my templates. Um, you know what I don't see here? I don't see the Stream Deck template. Maybe because it's not a 3.0 template. We may need to address that soon. Um, okay. 
So now the templates are installed. I'm not using the templates per se, but let's go into the existing project, right? And I think I have Visual Studio open. Here it is. And I'm gonna start to update some of the things here to the latest version. Where the heck did that come from? That's, come on now. Ah, that's better. All right. Um, that's gonna bother me. I don't know what changed in my settings here, but things are all wacky. Uh, it's compiled to WebAssembly. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, well, it's compiled into a DLL that runs on top of Mono that's compiled to WebAssembly. Um, so we're going to change this to that new version. Right, let me get the correct version number. This one. I'm just going to copy that. And it, this, is, this is where we're either going to have great success or we're going to get burned. So I'm going to paste that in. So Entity Framework Core. Let's see about this one. And this one. Ooh, I worry about these ones. I don't know why I need to have the SQL Lite and SQL Server ones in here. Let's see what happens. Um, sure. Code generation design. Uh, all right, and here's the Postgres one. Uh, I'm gonna wanna look that one up. So let me save and I'm gonna look, I'm gonna open the output window here. Uh, let's move it over here somewhere so we can see if it restores things properly. So I'm gonna go over to package manager and uh, restore failed, see the error list window. It failed? Are you kidding me? All right, let's take a look at the error list window. All right, can I convert lambda expression to object because it is not delegate type? Yeah, fine. Uh, entity framework, SQLite with version, entity framework, entity framework, entity framework. Okay, so that was SQLite, SQL Server, and tools. I'm going to chop this version off the end and see if we can get it to just find a preview 7 compatible version. Save that and let's look at the error list here and see if we can get that cleared out when it restores. Better. Okay. Unable to find extensions logging debug with version greater than preview 7 blah 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 blah. And also code generation design. So that was extensions logging debug. I'm going to clear that out. And what ASP.NET does is it finds one that matches. Because we're down under this preview stuff, it's going to just grab the latest one that matches that that stem version number. Let's see if we can get that to watch. Why use Blazor Part 2? So it's com uh, Jeremy asks, so it's compiled to IL, intermediate language, and it runs in a different CLR. Yes, it runs, well, yes, it runs on the mono runtime in the browser then. So, and this is one of the theories, one of the ideas behind why .NET 5 is going to be so compelling is because we want you to be able to choose which runtime you want to use, whether it's like the mono runtime and things are compiled to run ahead of time and you're not doing that just-in-time compilation that is so compelling for, say, a desktop application or some web applications, but maybe you wanted that ahead-of-time compile that folks do in in the browser, in their iPhone app, in their Android app, and be able to have that choice when you write code how you want your application to run. Fixter Jake, good morning. Fixter Jake had a question for us in the in the Discord chat that I want to make sure I definitely come back to here before we end the day today. So I corrected those couple, and I'm still looking at code generation design greater than preview 7. Let me pull that back to preview 6 and see if it works. And good. All right. That worked. And it looks like the rest of my code at least restored properly. If I try to build, control shift B, I'm building the solution here. I'm getting lots of warnings, kind of expected. 
because we're in preview versions of things. Um, and while that's going, I'm going to grab Discord over here, and I want to make sure I go to Jake's question. Um, yeah. This project was restored using ASP.NET Core app version 3.0 preview 6, but with current settings 3.0 preview 7 that's on the scheduling project and same thing on the test project ah because I've got different versions of things in there so I'm gonna chop that let's make sure it was test scheduling we, we've got the wrong versions of things here so I'll just paste that in I'll do the same deal here that looks like it should be better and it was up here this one I think that one's okay too. Let's try to rebuild. See what happens here. Um, okay, test scheduling and resource management scheduling both are upset. Hmm. Well, I'm. And the domain is. Okay, so all of my projects are saying Netcore App 3. I don't like nitpicking I don't like this down here I like having the project version up at the top of the project file um, so yeah that's our web project I'm okay with that and my unit test project um, you know what let's let's do this let's clean the solution get all the other references out of there and do a rebuild Um, yeah, Fixter Jake had, had a question here in, in Discord, um, in the Ask Jeff Anything, uh, channel that I want to be sure we answered. Delected pa detected package downgrade extensions logging from 3.0 preview 7, 19.362.4 to 13.10. Um, okay. So what that tells me is it was the extensions logging, this one. I need to synchronize those versions. So let me come back here. Extensions, logging, oh boy. All right, so I'm gonna grab that 3.0, blah, 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 blah. And it was in the test project? Do I have that right? Test scheduling. And it was extensions logging, this one. And that should remove that error. Restore failed. What, what, what? Wait, do I have to rebuild again? Clean and rebuild. The question that, that Fixter Jake had in Discord was, I'm spinning up an ASP.NET Core app just as a personal project. I'm accustomed to ASP.NET through my internship, but haven't actually started a project like it from scratch. My main question is, what sort of stuff is out there for user accounts and authentication? Everything seems to be from years ago that I found, so any recent knowledge would be great. There's, um, there's stuff for Microsoft Identity that, um, that is baked into ASP.NET Core projects. It's, it's pretty good. Um, you'll see some stuff around 2.2 for that. Um, we, we didn't get to that in the ASP.NET Core 2.2 um, workshop. A couple things came up that, that gave us a little bit of grief. In the ASP.NET Core 2.1 workshop, we do cover that. And um, that stuff hasn't changed between those two versions. So I encourage you to check that out. If you're interested in looking at that, that's over on my YouTube channel. You can find that uh, ASP.NET Core, the, the ASP.NET Core workshop. You'll see it there. Very, very high number of views. Um, our friend, I am not myself. He's another member of the uh, of the Live Coders team. You can click the Live Coders link over here. You can fire the Live Coders link in chat. Um, he works for um, uh, Auth0. And he's actually showing in a series of videos on his channel 
um, started a few weeks ago. He's showing how you can use ASP.NET Core with Auth0 if you want to have that organization manage your authentication. And we've done a little work with Auth0 for the chatbot that we've been building as well. So a couple different um, choices that you can take a look at there. Thanks for the shout out, Hugo. Appreciate that. So you're going to check that out later. Thanks so much, Fixter Jake. I appreciate the question. I'm going to mark that with a completed green check mark in the uh, Ask Jeff Anything um, channel over here. And if you have a question that, that you want some help with, check out the Ask Jeff Anything channel in our Discord. Great opportunity for folks to ask questions and other folks in, in the Discord can chime in with. And if there's a, a, a point that we need to make a... Um, a demo or something, we'll do it here live on stream and share. Unable to find package extensions logging with version blah 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 blah. You make me sad. Alright, I'm gonna have to open um, NuGet packages here. Um, let's see. Microsoft extensions logging. This one. What version is available here? Isn't that 30, 30, 19, 365. Like. The version before it is this one, so let's update that. I yes. Restore completed. Shh, update my error list. Here we go. Come on. And there's two updates sitting out here. Sure, I'll take both updates. Right, this this package version chasing is something that happens frequently when you're updating a project. Right? I feel like that's a that's an invalid error message. You know? Um, doing it live! Absolutely. Always doing it live. And we're going to take a look at our... Here it comes. We're looking at our log. All right. Yeah, rebuild all. Four succeeded. Fantastic. Everything works, and I've still got this weird razor error out here that's going to go away as we update our syntax, and I'm going to convert this to run client-side. I'm not quite sure how to do that, but we're going to do it. Um, okay, I th think that works. I really want to convert it to run uh, client side. Uh, have me in the background and thought your kid in the, was in the living room watching old Ren and Stimpy cartoons. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Diavo asks drinking protein. Nope, that's G Fuel. That's G Fuel. Um. Not sponsored. This is not an advertisement. I just really like their product. Uh, thanks for the chuckle. You're welcome. You're welcome, Frackberg. Yeah. Um, it's it's always a little bit dangerous playing some of those clips. Wait, master. It might be dangerous. But we usually get through them. Don't have too much of a problem. You heard the Eudora mail notification. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. No. We're, we're quite okay. Eudora, of course, my gosh, that was the old email client from back in the late 90s that, that I used to use, right? Now we know. And, now we and know. knowing is half the battle. Oh, yeah. At the very beginning, right. So, I've got all this stuff in here that we need to, we need to start converting over so it uses the new syntax. And I've got things like my on click here inside these Razor components. So you see these... Razor components right here above above my noggin, right there. Um, we need to convert those so that they're using the appropriate new syntax that's available. And these are components that allow us to define and interact with um, interact with our HTML using C sharp. So we have things like the at the on click method here, and it's it's jumping out and turning into C sharp. Well, we just saw from Dan's blog post. This needs to be an at in front, and 
does that mean I can just leave it like this? Because we're doing this lambda to to call and pass in a, uh, a parameter to our method here. So I think that's the syntax I want to change to. Get rid of that extra. Um, for for that those binding attributes there, binding parameters. That's what I'm referring to. Um, sounds like a job for regex. No, no, don't do that. No, no, I don't want to feel that pain of regex. No, no, please don't. Please be gentle. All right. Um, it does look cleaner. Yeah. Because it's now all C-sharp. We also have to change things over so that instead of it being at functions, it's now at code. That our code blocks in, uh, in Blazor are now denoted with at code instead of at functions. So I'm going to use the, the C-sharp, uh, no, it's not C-sharp, I'm sorry. The Visual Studio source control indicators here to help help me remember which pages I finished editing, I finished converting. So that one's done. It's got the red check. Let me start at the top here and work my way down. So availability, right? Let's look for, see, here we go. Right, I've got bind happening in here. So we want to flip this syntax like that. If, if I understand Dan's... Uh, blog post properly, so I'll get rid of right and that was that was the syntax in blazer preview 5 So I'll change this and I can get rid of that if I'm doing this properly, right? Um, so this I think I can get rid of those as well, right? Let me try and build and just see what happens and this should take care of some of that. Ancient Coder asks, was the project on preview six for the upgrade to seven? It was actually on preview five. There we go. Three succeeded. So let me look at the error list. We're clean. That might be right. We'll see. Um, let's see here. So I th think we're good there. I oh, I need to change this to code. You know what? Why don't we do a... Uh, I don't want to do a control H. If I do a find and replace, it's going to it's gonna throw off my stepping through these and changing them. Um, so let's do a little yak shaving here together, shall we? Um, that's fine. I'm going to move my at there, get rid of this one. Right, and this was working, the other one wasn't. That's right. Um, that's fine. That's fine. It's the binding here to on click we need to get rid of. Get rid of that last parenthesis. We're good. There's another binding. We'll get rid of that one. And we'll change that to code. Next one. Instead of lambda for the event handler, can you still put the method reference? Asks Hugo. Yes, you can, but because I'm passing in a parameter, it needs to know where to pull that parameter from. So that's why I'm using the Lambda. Um, this is a div with some style in it that we're going to want to... Oh no, we need that repeat. That's coming out of C Sharp. Yeah, that's going to need to stay there. Bazing, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, big thanks to all of our fo followers. We're closing in on 7,100. It looks like my gauge is slightly off from the official Twitch numbers there. Um, yeah, I'm not going to touch that up right now. Um, there's our style for the schedule item. That's okay. Let's get rid of this. I don't need that comment anymore. I'll change that. And that should work. Next, we did manage our schedule view. <coughs> the recurrence daily entry. Um, <laughs> here we go. So we've got some bind commands up here. These need to change as well. And you can see, um, if you're used to using dark mode for Visual Studio, you see it changes 
to show the uh, the turquoise bind here to indicate that that's being executed by some server side, some .NET code. Um, so that's that's helpful to visually cue me into seeing that. If you use light mode with your editor, that'll turn into bold and purple. Um, and I'm using dark mode here because on the phone, when you're watching when you're watching the the stream on your phone. Um, or you're watching the YouTube video, it's a little bit easier to see. And I think that's the last of the changes that we need there. Let me check the pages here. Um, you know what? None of these actually... I think these are the only Blazor components I need to be worried about. So I think we're going to be okay. Let's see if we can build and get this working. Uh, T minus 930, where T equals rainbow beard. Yes. Yes. We're going to do it. I think we're going to do it. That says build succeeded there behind me. Let me take a look at the live unit testing here. So I run live unit testing inside of the project. This is a feature, of course, of the enterprise version of Visual Studio. It's been building and running all of our unit tests in the background. And it's showing me that all the tests have run properly. So I feel pretty confident that I haven't broken anything and that uh, everything all through our unit tests still works through that project upgrade to preview seven. But let's do the real test. Let's actually run this thing. Let's see if it works. Um, before I run it, I just want to double check that my Docker, uh, my Docker container where my Postgres database is still running. And there it is. For this project, I've decided to put the data in a Postgres database that's running in a Docker container so that I can I can test, I can deploy quickly um, without all the all the ceremony around SQL Server and, and some of the other databases that are a little bit more um, a little bit more full feature, but also can be a little bit more finicky when I'm in development mode. Alright, let's run it. I agree, Ancient Coder. Let's just Should I give you the do it command in chat? <clears throat> Should I give you a do it so you, you can trigger Shia LaBeouf? I don't know. Maybe. All right, so there it is. It's running. <coughs> Ooh. All right, so that's... This is the problem and the reason <clears throat> that we didn't update to preview six. It's there's a compatibility issue in the preview version of our Postgres library. Um, let's see if there's an update. If not, then I'm going to move to a different project, to, to a different provider. And I really don't want to use SQL Server for that. Hmm. NPG SQL is still tied to Preview 5, says Welsh Ronaldo. That's what it looks like. Uh, Tamal343 three, three says, Greetings, I want to start programming with Blazor, and I'm kind of a rookie and still learning. That's great, Tamal. Welcome. Thanks so much for deciding to take the jump and try, trying the, the the new framework. It's it's still being worked on. Um, and Ancient Coder has a, has a great comment there. Um, if... Uh, Tamal's asking, do I show how to install Blazor in the previous videos? I actually showed a little bit of it at the beginning of, well, earlier in today's video. But, Ancient Coder's right. The, there's a full workshop showing you how to get started with Blazor with samples and uh, uh, sample code that you can work through. It's available on YouTube if you check out the YouTube channel there. Um, it'll help you get through that. It's, it's long. It's about seven hours. Um, but it's a YouTube video. Feel free to skip around. 
run it at a at a faster speed if you'd like but all the links to get started and and i show you exactly how to do that check it out that i think that'll it's meant to be a, a good update for uh, a good video for folks that are new to blazer there it is there's the exact link for that um we should make that maybe a command in the channel as well or even have have a series of links just below here on the wall that's not bad either um so should i use sqlite or sql server uh, or do i even go to mysql rats i don't know not a problem tomorrow best of luck to you and, and please uh, uh, stop back. We're going to be doing a lot of work with Blazor here on stream as we finish up this project. I don't know. Um, let's force the update on that and see if that works properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everybody always just clicks accept on those things and just go away. I don't care. I don't want to sit. Don't show me this. Go away. This is annoying. Ancient coders suggest going to SQL Server. Like a workshops command? Yeah, we could do that. That might work. To be able to show that. Um, just keep an eye on my time here because I do have a, a call at, at the top of the hour that I need to get to. What is this? Um, is that Kazanti or is that Sazanti? Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Pizza just arrived from the workshop. That's slow delivery. Well, I had to come across. Um. Answering a quick question for a colleague there on my phone. All right. Uh, sounds like Cezanti. Not a problem. I'll remember that. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, SQL Server is great, but it brings with it a feeling of running the whole world just to serve a few simple tables worth of stuff. Yes. Yeah, That and that's my concern, the Simeon, is that there's a lot there that I end up bringing along. And... I want to make sure that, that the project is accessible for folks outside of, uh, outside of, of Windows. Um, uh, Dookie to Muck, 21 Muck, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, I could do SQL Server. My SQL is a little bit lighter, but I'm going to run into, I could do MariaDB. I could go to Mongo as well. Ultramark, you're not wrong, but if I go to Mongo, I'm completely bailing out on Entity Framework altogether. And when I get to the production space, I'm going to be tied into Cosmos DB, and I do not want to use Cosmos DB because that's like swatting a fly with a... with not just a sledgehammer, with a, with a coal shovel. Um... It, it, it's Cosmos DB if you do not have giant enterprise data is such overkill um, it, it, is, it is I, I would rather use SQL Server before Cosmos DB don't use a cannon to kill a fly nice C17 nice that, that's another good one um, SQL Server can be run on Docker you're right ancient coder you're right um, why not use SQLite? Yeah, I, th I think that's... I think that's pretty good. To just use SQLite for right now. And, and SMB, you're correct. Cosmos DB is quite expensive on Azure. Let's, let's go to SQLite. I think we can do that and, um, and not... 
incur too much of a problem here. So here's the great thing about using an object relational mapper like Entity Framework, which comes by default in your ASP.NET Core application. There's other ones out there, but that's the one that, that Microsoft makes available and supports. Um, the provider is defined right here, use NPG SQL. I can just change that to say use SQLite because it, it's already referenced. And I need to specify, where is it, my connection string. Well, I can, right, I can specify my connection string as simple as saying, um, right, isn't it just database equals uh, uh, resource? Let's just say resource mgmt, mgmt.db. Right, is it that easy? Um, Denny says, interesting what I'm sharing about Cosmos DB. Sometimes you have the idea that you should use what's new. It is, so Cosmos DB is, is what's new. It's, Cosmos DB is, is designed to be able to replicate, replicate your data across multiple regions. Um, if you're just using it for the NoSQL content of it, you're, you're not getting the full reason why it was designed and why it was and and what it was built for for those folks that need no sql structure to run across multiple regions so you have great backups that's what cosmos is amazing for uh oh i need the version equals three thank you hugo um and it's um if you're just using it for mongo you're going to do you, you may do better off by just spinning up a MongoDB container inside of a Kubernetes cluster. Um, there's there's concerns that I have around how Azure behaves and how Azure is uh, marketed and used. That it that it is very much like using a cannon to swat flies. Um, there's a lot of new features and services that have been started up in Azure that. Quite frankly, nickel and dime developers, and there's ways that you can get by without using all the greatest, latest new features and services that are started up on Azure. And new services start on Azure every week. You don't need to use all of them. Um, my web application, my blog, runs on inside of a container um, on an a on an Azure app service. Runs very, very small with uh, on Linux. And it's it's WordPress, so there's there's options. You don't have to go and use all the latest and greatest everything. There's some really neat things there if you need big scalability capabilities. You don't have to do all of those things. There are smaller options that you can use. So that should now get us using SQLite for our database. And uh, I, oh, I also need to change this one down here to use SQLite as well. And I feel like I'm hard coding a database in here and we may need to change that as well in the future. But I'm gonna convert this to use SQLite because that, that Postgres is not working and I'm being forced by my framework to move on. Um, it doesn't make me happy, but it's, it's kind of necessary. Um, using the every new WizBank feature of AWS Azure, has a, yeah, it does have feature tie-in. It does. Um, and you don't need a full Kubernetes cluster just to deploy a single Docker container. Absolutely, Ultramark. Well said. Um, yeah, you don't need the full cluster. The I do feel like for my um, for my WordPress application, having having a my database running inside of another Docker container right next to it is easy. It's small, low impact there. So, Cosmos is literally for multinationals, data lakes, and stuff. Yes, the Simeon. Well, well said. Absolutely. And it's a great feature. It has tremendous capabilities if that's what you need. If you're just storing a table's worth of data. No, you don't really need that. And Kubernetes clusters, yes, they're, they can be like clobbering as well. You don't need all of that stuff all, every time. All right, applications working. Let's try to register and create a new account. So there's my email. Here's my password. 
I forget what my password was. Will that work also? No. No. Um. <laughs> so it's data source equals database. I have database. Rats. Rats, rats, rats. Data source. <clears throat> Thank you, chat room. Uh, who caught that? That was... Um, uh, can Lab. Thanks so much for the help. Points to you. Um, doo -doo -doo. There's a dev build for the Postgres. Cool. Um, yes, there are... There are courses on... Who was... Circle 83. Uh, to learn C-sharp as a noob with no coding knowledge, what do I recommend? Official docs and projects. Books, tutorials. A lot of folks recommend Pluralsight. Wintelect Now has a great library as well. Um, all of my courses have been removed from Pluralsight on, on those topics. Um, to each their own. Let's see if that works. No, doesn't support the keyword version either. Get rid of that version. Try it again. At least it is a nice error message. You're right, s &B. It is. It's a better error message to help out. Uh, a dev build from Sunday. Nice. Um... I don't want to grab things per se from my get. Um, just because I've got so many unstable things already. But uh, I do appreciate that they're close to releasing an update there. Um, here we go. Apply the migrations. Are you kidding me? Alright, let's go back over to here. Oh. Uh, that's that's not my name. There it is. Uh, .NET EF database update. Let's see if that works. Doesn't like it. System text JSON document parse. Are you kidding me? In Entity Framework core tools. Well, that's really annoying, isn't it? Oh my. Yeah. You're right, Copper Beardy. LinkedIn Learning has a month trial available for free as well. None of this is referencing None of this is referencing my code from what I see here. Let's go over and take a look at right and if I right if I look in here applying migration for schedule foreign key. I feel like I need to Yeah, delete the migrations and start fresh. Oh jeez. That I really don't like that. But I mean, we are dealing we're, we are dealing with preview versions of the tools here. <sighs> All right. Um. No. Are you kidding? Is it done any of migration? Can somebody clip that? <clears throat> I mean, I can't even run... Can I even run .NET EF? No, I can't even run .NET EF. Um, so, 
I'm going to get a bug report into the Entity Framework team that there's zero migration path here. If I delete all of my migrations, does it work? No. So all of my code is completely removed. And right, that references and uses anything with, uh, right, oh, here's more migrations. Fine, we'll get rid of these too. No, doesn't work at all. Did I install EF tools? Um, yeah, they were, they're updated, they're referenced as part of the project. Right there. So, I've got the latest version of the preview tools installed. And it doesn't work. It did introduce its own JSON stuff. And it broke Entity Framework. And I'm right up against time. Ancient Coder on the ball with a clip. Thank you so much. Can you run it in another environment? What other environment? Um, wow. Sean, you're right. Like, you know what? I'm going to tag this and I'm going to... Put the candle back. I'm going to. Um, I'm going to go into the send feedback here and report a problem. Entity Adam says I've got a .NET Core version, a dependency version mismatch. No, I don't. I've got the same Preview 7 version all the way down. The SQL Server ones, these are the versions that were available out there that I upgraded to. But I am Preview 7 all the way down. These are different patch versions. I shouldn't see a change between patch versions here. But I am the whole way down in this project using Preview 7. I agree with you. It looks like it, but no. Um, broken Lincoln.net starting, .NET tools. This is from February. No. .NET EF is broken in 3.0. Preview 7. Um, when updating a project to Preview 7 from to 3.0, Preview 7 from an earlier version, uh, .NET EF uh, breaks. See the attached clip from Twitch. Uh, code can be found at, and let me give the GitHub link here. Um, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that with every preview version here, Entity Framework breaks more and more. Um, where is it here? Right, and there's, there's stuff broken in Azure Functions for um, for uh, EF, for .NET Core as well. Uh, there it is. Alright. Not there. Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, sample code can be found at. And you know what? I'm even going to check this in and tag it. Um... Come on now. Git commit. Uh, what am I missing there? Those. Oh, I'm down in a folder. Um, <laughs> um, updated to 3.0 preview 7. Okay. Um, 
git tag 3.0 p7. I'm going to git push and include my tags. Yep, ancient coder, thank you so much. Uh, Jeff with no hat on. Oh, you must have gone to YouTube. Yes. I need to replace that welcome video. Good. Um, there it goes. Right. There we go. All right. I think we've uh, we've got everything there. Um, can be found uh, in the 3OP7 branch at. Actually, can I reference the branch directly? Right, I can jump folks over to the right branch. Or, I, it's not a branch, it's a tag. Tag, there we go. Uh, next. Um, sure, leave the screenshot. Leave the screenshot, that's fine. Mmm... Um, .NET EF uh, uh, It does not run at the command line and uh, external providers like uh, NPG SQL no longer work. There's the report logs. So the team will get that and they'll be able to work on that. No pressure at all. Yeah. All right. We are right up against time. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, we didn't get quite everything done. We ran into some issues with our... We ran into some issues with the database migration. And quite honestly, I'm probably going to roll back to Preview 5. I have to. I don't have a way to use a database. Um, and that's disappointing um so yeah this is coding right so everything's experimenting and deciding when and how to move forward appropriately um thank you so much for for joining us i'm gonna do a little a little bit of <laughs> thanks so much carrie uh i'm gonna do a little investigation and uh send a couple emails here and see what we can come up with and uh, get a resolution to this because I can't be the only one who's running into this issue. Um, let me take a look at who's streaming out there that we can we can raid. And uh, oh my goodness, I'm zoomed in just a little bit much here. Wow. Um, you know what? Here's somebody we haven't raided in a very long time. Let's do this. Let's set up for... Uh, thank you for the raid call, Ancient Coder. Let's raid Clark IO. Um, that's our friend Brian Clark. He's learning Python from scratch. Um, over there. And, uh, yeah. Looks like they're having a real good time. So let's set up to raid Brian Clark. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. I'll be back again tomorrow at about the same time, 10 a.m. Eastern, um, 7 a.m. Pacific, 1400 UTC, and we'll write some more code together then. And hopefully we'll have an answer to this, and uh, we'll be a couple steps a little bit further down the line in making this all work properly. All right. Um, let's see here. I think that's everything. Yeah. All right, everybody, get ready to say hi to Brian Clark. Copy out that raid call appropriately, and here we go. We'll see you.